Welcome to on-the-job inspector training. When is OJT required? OJT is required on all projects over $2 million and 275 days and over. Both of these criteria have to be met in order for the OJT requirement to apply. The number of trainees is based on the contract dollar amount for the project. A training evaluation meeting is held prior to the start of the project it usually follows the pre-con to discuss the OJT requirement for the project. OJT is governed by 23 CFR Part 230, FDOT Standard Specification 7-25, and FDOT Compliance Manual Chapter 5. This is the OJT Enrollment Interview Form. This form is completed prior to the employee starting training on the project. It is submitted to the PA and or inspector via email by the RCS for completion. Sections one and two are completed by the RCS. Sections three through six are completed by the inspector at the time of the interview. Once the form is received by the field staff, it is to be completed and submitted back to the RCS within two business days. If it cannot be completed within this time frame, contact the project staff so that the OJT RCS can go on site to conduct the interview. These forms will accompany the enrollment interview form and are to be used by the inspector during the interview. The form on the left is the monthly time report or MTR. This form tracks the number of hours the trainee trains in a specific category. You will use this form to inform the trainee of minimum and maximum hours required for graduation. The form on the right is the proficiency record. This lists the areas in which the trainee will train in and will act as the graduation observation document once the trainee has completed training. You will also use this form to determine if the employee is proficient in the listed areas. Sections 1 and 2, Project and Trainee Identification. These sections are completed by the RCS before submittal to the field staff. Section 3, Prior Work Experience. This section is completed by the inspector. Please ensure all questions are answered, as most are two-part questions, starting with number 14. All answers are to be filled out to their entirety. If answers are missing, the RCS will have to coordinate a time and place for another interview to obtain the missing information. This can cause delays in training and could potentially lead to the trainee not being enrolled if too much time has lapsed. Be as detailed as possible so the RCS and the District Construction Compliance Manager can determine the eligibility of the trainee for enrollment. Section 4, Proficiency Assessment. This section is to be completed by the inspector. With the proficiency record in hand, ask the trainee if they have experience in each item listed. If they answer yes, please ask follow-up questions or ask them to elaborate. For example, if a trainee is being interviewed to train as a roller operator and he says he knows how to operate one, a follow-up question can be, can you explain the tasks you completed? Sometimes an employee has moved a piece of equipment from one side of the project to another just to get it out of the way, but has never actually operated it for its intentional purpose. In the case of the roller operator trainee, he may not have performed actual rolling work, making him eligible for training. Another scenario is that a trainee has actually performed the operations, but isn't proficient. Let's say our roller trainee has performed roller operations, but is not capable of doing it unsupervised or without help. This would make him not proficient, which in turn would make him eligible for training. The key in this section is to be as detailed as possible so the RCS can make an accurate assessment for OJT. Note that the last items have an option for not listed. If there are only three proficiencies listed on the proficiency record, the last two items shall be marked not listed. Please do not answer no. Section five, OJT program information. This section is also to be completed by the inspector. These questions are to verify if the prime performed their responsibility in informing the potential trainee of the obligations of the OJT program. Numbers 21 and 22 are asking if the employee has received the MTR and the proficiency record. 
Although you will have these in hand while performing the interview, the employee is to answer if they physically received it from the prime, not from other project staff. Number 23 is asking if the employee has received a trainee identification card or has been advised that they will receive one. Identification cards are not given until enrollments are approved. So in this case, it is okay for you as the inspector to inform them that they will receive one once they have been approved into the program and you can mark yes. Section six, signatures and comments. After the interview has been completed, please be sure to sign and date the bottom of the form, have the trainee sign, and any additional comments from you or the trainee, please mark down in number 27. The items that you will be observing throughout the duration of training are workforce, training hours, and performance. For workforce, you will be confirming that the type of work the trainee is to be training in is actually being performed on the project. The type of work should include the task of the classification the trainee was interviewed about. This is the daily weekly form. This form is used by inspectors to document trainee hours on site. Although this is not a required form, this form is crucial in assisting the RCS in verifying the hours reported on the monthly time reports. The inspector is to fill out the activity the trainee was performing on each day of the week. The total hours spent working on the project and the total training hours are to both be reported in their respective columns. This is done to ensure accurate hour reporting. For example, a trainee may be on site working for eight hours, but may only have trained for three hours. The Prime will use this information to cross-check with their payrolls to ensure that training hours for trainees are reported correctly. Once the daily weekly is complete, the inspector will sign it and submit it to the Prime who will also sign. The daily weeklies for each month get submitted to the RCS along with the monthly time report. OJT Graduation When the Project RCS determines the minimum hours have been met, a graduation proficiency observation is completed. When is proficiency tested? The trainee is tested for proficiency once the minimum number of hours have been reached. The form is submitted to the PA or inspector via email by the RCS. Sections one through four and number 15 will be completed upon submission to the PA or the inspector. Sections one through three just contain basic information about the project and the proficiencies that will be tested. Section four will identify the trainee being observed for proficiency and where the observation will take place. Number 15 is the contractor consenting to the observation and the date that they wish to conduct the observation. Section five and six, proficiency observation requests and observation results. As the inspector, you will complete number 19 only. Once the observation is complete, you will sign as the observer and have the trainee and contractor sign as well. If the employee is determined to not be proficient, they will need to train more and another observation is to be performed. The process starts over for those needing multiple observations. The next time they test, however, they will only need to perform the proficiency that they did not perform correctly during the last observation. They do not need to redo all proficiencies. If an employee is observed all four times allowed, meaning numbers 19 through 22 have all been completed, they will be required to complete the maximum amount of training hours for their training classification. And this concludes the on-the-job training inspector training.